Welcome to Electron Online, and to gain a better understanding of free fall, another way, another form of one dimensional motion, we're going to look at it from a conceptual perspective. In addition to that, to make things a little bit easier, knowing that g is a minus 9.8 meters per second square, let's just round it off and call it minus 10 meters per second square. So what happens if someone climbs to the top of a very tall cliff and drops a ball down? And let's assume that we can ignore any kind of wind resistance or anything like that so that the acceleration is purely minus 10 meters per second squared. What happens to the object? Well, that means that after one second, the object will now be moving a minus 10 meters per second. So let me maybe write it down like this. So we can say that Velocity after one second is equal to minus 10 meters per second. Velocity initial equals zero. So it went from zero to 10 meters per second in a negative direction. That's what acceleration due to gravity really means, right? That every second it's moving 10 meters per second down faster than the second before. So after two seconds, velocity after two seconds would then of course be minus 20 meters per second and velocity after three seconds, and of course, I really wanted to keep this a little bit closer together because I want to do it a little bit more, so let me put the lines down a little closer. So let's say over here is after one second, over here is after two seconds, three seconds, and four seconds. Let's do it like that. So V after three seconds is equal to minus 30 meters per second, and V after four seconds is equal to minus 40 meters per second. Let me line these up a little bit better so that we have a better visual on this. Don't want to get sloppy here. Sloppiness makes things confusing. So V after one second is equal to minus 10 meters per second. And V after two seconds is equal to minus 20 meters per second. Now, here's an interesting question for you. How far did the ball drop during the very first second? And when I ask that question in my classrooms, a lot of people will say 10 meters because it went from 0 to 10 meters per second. It will have fallen 10 meters. But that's not the correct answer. <clears throat> Excuse me, because what is the average velocity of the object uh, when it drops during the first second? Well, notice that at the very beginning when you drop it, the velocity is 0 meters per second. And at the end of one second, it is 10 meters per second. So the average for that whole first second is only 5 meters per second. So V average for the first second is only five meters per second. And so therefore, I don't need the parentheses there, I can get rid of that. So therefore, the total distance the object falls in the first one second is only five meters. So after one second, it has dropped a distance of five meters. So now the question may be, what would be the distance that the object falls during the second second? So between the beginning of the second second and the end of the second second, how far did it fall? And again, we use the same logic. It started out at 10 meters per second, negative. It ended at 20 meters per second, negative. So the average velocity, and of course, maybe I should stay consistent and call it minus 5 meters per second. But for the second second, the average velocity would be minus 15 meters per second. So V average for the second second is equal to minus 15 meters per second. And that makes sense. It starts at 10 meters per second, ends at 20, average would be minus 15. And that means it drops 15 meters during the second second. So 15 meter drop during the second second, which means that the total drop for the first two seconds would be a total of 20 meters. All right. How far did the object drop during the third second? Well, it started at minus 20. It ended at minus 30. That means the average velocity over the third second is equal to minus 25 meters per second, which means that during that third second, it should have dropped or fallen 25 meters. So during the third second, it's going to drop 25 meters, so that at that point, the total distance would be 45 meters. So after three seconds, the ball would be 45 meters lower than where it started from. How far did it travel during the fourth second? Well, again, we can use the same logic. The average velocity, if it started at minus 30 and then at minus 40, would be minus 35 meters per second. And if that was the average velocity during the fourth second, it will have dropped 35 meters during the fourth second. 
So that would be 35 meter drop. And so then the total distance after four seconds would be 35 plus 45 or 80 meters of distance. So notice that every consecutive second it drops 10 meters more than the second before. Five meters in the first second, 15 meters in the second second, 25 meters in the third second, and 35 meters in the fourth second. So how far do you think it will drop in the next second, in the fifth second? Well, it will be 10 more meters. That would be 45 meters. And it will have fallen a total distance of 80 plus 45 or 125 meters. Notice the average velocity was minus 5 meters per second, minus 15 meters per second, minus 25 meters per second, minus 35 meters per second. So every second, the average velocity would be an additional 10 meters per second, which makes sense if you assume that the acceleration is a minus 10 meters per second square. So this is just an exceptional look at how things fall, how things accelerate during free fall. So hopefully that will help you understand the coming problems.